Oliwa. It was at 8 p.m. on 4th July 2000 on this road near Chawakuza Trading Center on the Masakambara Road when a UPDF lorry collided with a school truck carrying students of St. Henry's SS Chinoni who were returning from a sports competition. Three of the children died on this very spot while other 15 survived with several injuries but some of them got their hands amputated. Nearly 11 years later, NTV visited the home of one of the accident survivors, Margaret Nansove. Her arms were crushed, so the doctors were forced to amputate them to save her life. Even after the pain she endured, Nansove became helpless and life meaningless. This is what she looked like in hospital after the amputation. And this was Nansove before the crash that left her entire family devastated. Yeah. Nansove cannot do much on her own. Every morning, her 62-year-old mother, Mujakila Nakalisa, has to bathe and dress her before heading to work. The mother also has to take her daughter to the toilet. But she can eat using a fork and drink with a straw. Nansove uses two artificial arms donated by Reverend Elich Elipaz of Germany. Her mother is jobless and the dad is a primary school teacher. But Nansove struggles to help her parents earn a living. She has a computer which can burn music CDs. And from this, she earns between 3,000 and 5,000 shillings a day. But on a bad day, she can return home empty-handed. Nansove had hoped to become a teacher and have five children, but those dreams were cut short by the accident. Her late uncle, the Reverend Father Sida Bowule, who died in 2006, played a big role in ensuring that the accident victims get justice. The families of the 15 children sued UPDF, and in 2008, court ruled that the Ministry of Defense must compensate them with 800 million shillings, depending on the extent of the injuries. But they are yet to get that money. So whereas we do respect the court ruling, it's no longer in the hands of the Minister of Defense to compensate. It's now with the Office of the Attorney General. The, the, the principle we follow here is first come, first serve. But the money, that are, the money that is released to us by the Minister of Finance, in most cases, is insufficient. We also visited Ndegea village of Masaka Road and met Charles Jumba who lost an arm in the same accident. Jumba managed to buy a cow, which makes him a little money from milk sales. He can also dig and had dreamt of being a sportsman, but this remains just that, a dream. I can't go in the public to say something. They take me as someone who is disabled, but, in, but my head can do something. The former captain of his school's football team is now a struggling farmer. She's not sure whether she will return to Germany to service the artificial arms since her uncle who funded the trip is dead. Margaret's hands are long gone and they cannot be recovered again. But if government could compensate her together with her other 14 friends who are involved in the same accident, it could open a fresh page and this time not of agony but a hope to live a better life. Over to you, the Solicitor General. Sudir Biarhanga, NTV Masaka.